last time ussy on roll gay row plussy. <sighs> well, I probably shouldn't touch this computer screen with my uh, fat claws. I just made a mess in there earlier. You should touch the computer screen. Oh, I guess you can hear me. You're not too far away, Zastasha. Hey, there's a... Um, this thing says a face ID is required. I don't think it's looking for my ugly mug. Uh, just stay away from the computer until I get back. But I'm going to go get like a little picture of Tommy from upstairs and just like put his little picture up to the computer. And then like, you know, we'll figure it out from there. Okay, before you go, uh, maybe get one of everybody who lives in this house. We don't know it's necessarily Tommy's. Oh my gosh, that was such a biblical idea. I can't, I'm so proud of us. Look at us go. There are family portraits on the wall. You see Tommy hugging his two kids. Oh, they're at the beach. They love to travel together. And then you come across a picture of everyone in the family, all four people. However, you don't see Pamela in the picture. You see Tommy standing next to another man with the two girls. Um. Huh. Oh, okay. Is that his son or brother or something? I don't think so. Oh my god. I, <laughs> are you two brothers? Rux, I just, I don't think that. But so you think these can't... two are a couple? What's that? Yes. What was that person in the bailing you out detective agency? Who was that? I don't know, but something's definitely amiss here, and we need to figure it out soon. I'm going to text to Sasha and Rux. Tommy's coming home. Welcome to Roll Gay Roleplay, a real gay, real play D&D podcast. I'm Chris the DM, and at my anniversary dinner, I had to explain to Mark what Escar Gots was. Oh, <sighs> hey. Wow. I love that. I hate that. Oh. Hi, my name is Katie. I play Lespector Saint Tit, and I love what Chris and Mark have. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Brandel. I play Bay. And on a, we're taking a departure. I have a, a crippling addiction to scented candles. Oh. It's really taking a toll on me, and I feel like I needed to let you guys know. Is there a pun in here? No. It's just a serious <laughs> problem, Katie. They're not always jokes. It started as a substitution <laughs> for not bathing, but now it's real. <laughs> I have, I'm addicted to candosi. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Tisha, and I play Rux Baladicino. I think that wax play is, you know, <laughs> is, is fine. I have no problem with that, Brandel. For I don't, anyone don't think it's unhealthy. You use very specific candles for wax play. Do not go to Bath and Body Works. <laughs> you will murder your skin. Like, don't do that to yourself. Um, <laughs> speaking of skin, I am Jonathan, and I play Zastasha Felzar. And not only is Anitra fine, but Anitra is going to win RuPaul's Drag Race this season. Oh my god. That talent show? Are you okay. kidding me? I have the way that. she... Oh, take my headphones ate, off. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the way she ate the house down boots, God does he, like... Walk that fucking duck. <laughs> yes! Uh, okay. Is that my pussy? It's on fire. <laughs> Desperately Googling context. <laughs> Speaking of fire, we have a fire podcast. Oh. Wait, no, we have a question. A question is also fire, but not as fire as our podcast. Right? Am yeah. I right? Okay. Or do people like the questions better than the podcast? Well, sometimes I mean, it's all part minutes. of the podcast. I will so. say that I've heard people like on the Discord say that they will skip past our introduction and questions to go right to the podcast. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Sounds about right. Because yeah. <laughs> we pull shit too much. <laughs> What's our question? On the disc, it's what do you want for Valentine's Day? My, uh, what I want for, for Valentine's Day, um, definitely not chocolate because I don't like chocolate. But I've really been getting into stuffed animals. So I think, like, you know what I really want? I want one of those uh, problematic um, American Girl dolls. Oh, is that a stuffed animal? (laughs) Are they problematic? I don't know. I thought they were non-problematic. They just... That's, like, their whole thing. They just... Well, before, what? Because they had their first black uh, little girl, like, in the 80s or 90s. Anyway. um, And she was like, No, and she was, like, a slave. (laughs) What? Yeah. I think she was a, a descendant. Yeah. Her she has a whole backstory. They really lean into culture. Just because something has American in front of it doesn't mean it's problematic. Uh, it probably is. <laughs> but in this case, I think that's wrong. <laughs> it's the exception to the rule. Um well, you know, now that I say that I don't want it. I only want something problematic. So I want like a a Milo Yiannopoulos poster. Wow. Ew. God, you okay. went extreme. I went to hell. <laughs> uh Cause he's 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 like converted gay now, right? <laughs> Is he? I think he's like straight married now. Yeah, he's straight. No, he's not. He's Is he straight married? I don't know that he's married. I know he's he's straight now. Wow. Okay, well for Valentine's Day, I want um a bucket of fried chicken and a large chocolate cake to eat by myself. <laughs> oh. Yum. This is not an oh, Chris. This is a happy thing. Aw. Thank you. Got you. <laughs> I just want your support. <laughs> and he's going to feed his anime body pillow. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got to cut a hole in there. Well, a few. Uh, another. Oh, my God. I have to go Chris. <laughs> I can't talk shit. I said Mila Yiannopoulos with a straight face. Never mind. Right. For Valentine's Day, I won... Someone to fold my clothes and put them away and then take me to dinner. That's it. Pretty simple. That was so wholesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I, mean, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't take, I wouldn't say no to drugs. <laughs> You're such an American girl. I love it. I, we don't do anything for Valentine's Day. So I don't know what I, what I want is new windows. I want new windows in this house. That's all I want. <laughs> And that's a, probably a big ask. Oh, I want windows. I want new windows. That's it. Are windows expensive? I imagine yes. they're expensive. Yes. Oh, they're so mm-hmm. expensive. And they get up to like triple glaze these days. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the three upstairs windows came to like 6100 Holy shit. That's so much. I was thinking like 300 per window, but that is definitely no. more than that. No, it's so $2, much. $2,000 a window? Yeah. yeah. Put some fucking... That's all like that's installation... That's everything, right? They're so yeah. expensive. I thought it was cheaper too. Trust me, when I got that, I was like, "Oh, we were really not going to do that." At that point, just buy a car and live in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm changing my answer to be a little bit less sad. No, <laughs> it was so happy. What are you talking about? We're very proud of you. I'm very supportive. <laughs> this year, my resolution was like more self care. So this Valentine's Day, I want to buy myself flowers because I don't need no man and like a bubble bath and a glass of wine and a face mask it's gonna be real cute yes Ooh, I love that we're going Full Hallmark protagonist yeah exactly yeah I love that I'm changing my answer now to a spa day that's what I want That'd uh see yes I am changing my answer to also yep. a spa day there it is yeah same we should all coordinate Oh my god, let's meet up in Canada and do a spa day. <laughs> On this day, we will, we will all wear face masks and get in a bathtub with a bath bomb. Yes. Hot stone massage. <laughs> bring your bring your laptop in there and we'll we'll record a uh a spa day podcast. <laughs> oh sure, oh sure. We'll play fall guys in the tub. <laughs> and then it's just Katie like splashing water and cussing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of self-care, treat yourself to an episode of our podcast. Yeah, I also didn't go, so... Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. I was about to say, did Katie go, or is this another one of those times where somebody went and I forgot? I'm so sorry. It's okay. I also forgot that I didn't go. I just... There's a really good 
Italian place in my town that does like a good vegan pasta and entree with like garlic bread and stuff and I think it'd be nice to go get a little Italian pasta dinner. Aww. That would be cute. That would be yeah. cute. I haven't gone to a sit down restaurant in a really long time. Why? Is it a personal choice or? Oh, it's just because I find it very exhausting. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'd rather just eat in my house than try to reserve a restaurant. Also, I always just want to. It's always an impulse decision, and a lot of restaurants are like reservations. That's true. If you really mm. need to find a spot, so. Mm-hmm. Especially if your uh, if your area of residence still believes that COVID exists, and so like they're still following certain protocols. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because not Texas, baby. Texas, baby. We are free, wild, and crazy. Like there's not a life saving <laughs> disease out here. Come on down. We've removed the sneeze guards from the salad bar. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> So love is in the air uh, in Valentine's Day. We hope you all have a great Valentine's Day. We'll be back for Valentine's Day uh, in the next episode. But uh, love is in the air for this episode, hopefully. Before we get to that, do we remember where we last left off? Kind of. I do remember that Rux and Zastasha are, I think Rux is upstairs keeping a lookout for Tommy Bahama, Tommy Wasabi, Tommy Wasabi. And uh, Zastasha is trying to extract information uh, from the computer. I don't remember if the wall was mended correctly. I think I got some of it done. And I think someone's coming up. And what's the, th- and there are, we were talking about this in Pregos, but there are some working theories as to why Pamela came to you. She could be a competitor, she could be uh, the authority. She could be a mistress, like Katie's saying. She could be a drag queen that actually is his husband. Uh, so we're picking up. <laughs> uh, you know that Tommy's on his way home. Zastasha and Rux, you are currently in the Wasabi household. What do you want to do? Rux is going to check to see if Zastasha replied to that message, just making sure that she got it, or he got it. Both are fine. Am I done with my 10 minutes? Yeah, we can say okay. that you're done with it. Because you were extracting information on what? Uh, from the computer. The computer and not like that secret drug room. I was trying to figure out if there was anywhere that I got like... Because like, we needed the password, didn't we? It was the banking information. Um, Ruck says to check the deleted files. There was stuff about drugs, organizing, stuff like that. Email contents. The bank screen that was timed out. Okay. Okay. So we'll say that when you received the text from Lynn that Tommy's on his way home, it's just about the time that you finished up uh, extracting the information from the computer. So you have it, Zastasha? Okay. Oh, I sure was. I was extracting information from the computer. I sure the fuck was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I immediately did a bing bing on my phone. My Modestasha crazer. That's <laughs> Uh, and um, I am going to uh, see that uh, t- someone is coming back to the house. I'm going to look at the wall, shrug at it and say good enough. Uh, close the wall, book it upstairs and reach Rux Baldacino. OK, I imagine I go through the back door because the back door would be like safer to leave through. Yeah, that makes sense. Are you both heading out the back door running at this point? running okay. yeah yeah then, i mean like i imagine like is it like a green backyard like with grass and like s- like um wooden fences and stuff like that or yeah it's exactly like... it's a cute yeah so i'm like swan diving over fences love it so i think that you got it out i think you got out with enough time that i don't need to have you roll anything to get out of there you've done what you've done in the house you've extracted information you figured out a lot is it time to head back to the agency and kind of close this case you think yes yeah okay We'll have all of you take a different light rail to get back there. And we'll just rush you to that at this point. Wait, this is a joke because my tr- light rail currently isn't working. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's really traumatizing. Oh, sorry, Katie. Podcast. That's right. I felt the frustration, Katie. <laughs> PTSD. Yeah, I live in Canada, okay? And the first thing that people think when they think of Canada is, oh, it snows and gets cold in the winter, Right. Yeah, my light rail for my city, my big, big city, wasn't made to deal with a little bit of ice in the winter. And so there's four trains. They keep sending trains and they keep getting stuck. 
<laughs> Wait, really? Like, <laughs> like how tragic. That's so stupid. So and bad. poor planning. It's Quick, so send dumb. another train. <laughs> like, thanks, yes. Trudeau. Yes, exactly. <laughs> thanks, Trudeau. Thanks, Trudeau. Anyways, your functional light rail is working. Yes, yes. Uh, everyone's except Katie's. Lynn Spectres get stuck in the ice. <laughs> Lynn, Lynn Spectre has to take a taxi or an Uber home. <laughs> On my own dollar. It's coming out of our paychecks. <laughs> right? The four of you will make your way back to the agency. You can enter. Your doorbell goes off. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, <laughs> Did no. we pick that? That's what you picked, Brandon. Oh. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm proud of it. Yo, what's the raccoon up to? Uh, the raccoon is currently nestled into the bookshelf, kind of sleeping between books. They've kind of like kicked him aside to make a little hammock out of books. Nice. Is this Dasha? We made it inside, right? Yes, you four are inside. Okay, great. I immediately go to my computer, and the first thing I do is I uh, upload any pictures that I took. And then I, <laughs> I used my hair to connect to my own personal computer, and I upload all the information that I stole from Tommy Wasabi. Okay. Just full avatar. Cool. And uh, while I'm doing it, I'm telling everyone, I say, um, y'all should like totally come here and like look and see what I got because like I'm just so good at being a detective. Like I'm just such a sleuth. Look at me. And I pat myself on the back. Yes. I will say as soon as Lynn walked in, he lit a cigarette and started a pot of coffee. So. <laughs> what time is it? Doesn't matter. It's late. It's very late at night. Coffee's an emotional support thing, okay? We'll let you upload that. Uh, what you're getting from it, the major stuff. Uh, so the pictures you took, you've got pictures of uh, that Lanesha took in the French 80 smoke shop. You've also got any pictures you took of the Wasabi household. I know a couple things that were mentioned was the family portrait, Tommy Wasabi, his husband, not Pamela Dionysus and their two kids. Tommy Wasabi's kids are with the husband, not Pamela. Correct. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Just a quick question. Pamela Dionysus, like the goddess of discord. Like the goddess of pleasure and wine. That's not Dion. Is that Dionysus? Dionysus is madness. I'm not sure. Yeah, Dionysus, Dionysus is, is discord. pleasure, though. Because wasn't Dionysus the golden apple? No, that was Eries, I think. Uh, like- oh, Dionysus. Okay, I'm thinking of someone else. Never mind. I'm thinking of Eris. Yes. Dionysus, grape harvest. I'll read it all in order. God of the grape harvest, winemaking, orchards and fruit, vegetation, fertility, festivity, insanity, ritual madness, religious ecstasy, and theata. Ooh. Think of the robot from Futurama that eats grapes. Hedonism bot. He's also a queer god and is known as, he was described as man-woman-ish. Man-woman-ish. Yeah, he's a queer god. I wish that people described me as that. <laughs> That's a good description. Okay. So what else am I getting? I'm sorry. You got the information about his schedule on when he's bringing what products to what nightclubs. It being a Friday night, you know he went to Scissor Me Timbers, which is why you ended up going there. Also, you've got accounts that are only in Tommy's name with a very high balance. They are under the 420 business name but combining that with what you know from bay's break-in you know that the business is not doing very well yeah uh, and it looks like all the transfers going into that account are from an unknown source but they're correlating with all the correspondence from the submarine still getting information from the submarine you see a few things from that so you can t- you can gather that submarine is at least a boss or one of his bosses where he's getting his information from he's definitely you know moving some drugs around this city and he's making a lot of fucking money doing it. And he's hiding it in his own business. I look at everyone and I say, so clearly, um, Tommy Wasabi is a part of his his cigar store, his vape shop, if you will. It's like totally a front. Um, they're doing like money laundering. They're doing like money transporting. And it's clearly like illegal. And like, I know that like we're just detectives. And like, all our job is to do is to like, you know, solve the case. But like... This is, like, really bad. You, you, like, should we, like, call the proper authorities and, like, tell them everything that's happening right now? I'll be honest. If they are making this much money, then they are probably working with the authorities. Hate to break it to you, but 
city this big? Like, so dishonest. Who would be so bad like that? Oh my god. I mean, you saw how much money there was? That is an attractive amount of money. I really don't think that we should tell Pamela about the drugs or the money. Oh my god. I don't think that we should either. Is Pamela a cop? That is a very good question. (laughs) So then we all know that Pamela is like not his wife, right? Maybe uh, we should call her in and try to find out what's going on. You know, like uh, say, hey, we got some uh, information and uh, we have some questions. Bye. I think we should get our story straight first. I think that we should just tell her the truth and question her, but like not tell her that Tommy Wasabi has like a shit ton of money, like just laying around in his like home and his store as a business front. Well, I mean, uh, what was her uh, original ask anyway? Was it the, uh, what was he doing instead of going to the gym or? I think so. Okay, well, I mean, we have an answer. He He's going to nightclubs. She was worried about her husband cheating. She was worried that he was not going to the gym. So we can tell her he is cheating. You are the one that he is cheating with. Yeah, I mean, we we got an answer. I mean, obviously, he's married. To this man. But, uh, to, to somebody else. Yeah. Oh, I mean, does did we see, a, like, a wedding photo, or is that what we saw? Yeah, yeah, you saw a bunch of family portraits throughout the house. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, yeah, we could, we could tell her that. That's what she paid for, and uh, tell her, yeah, he's not going to the gym. He's uh, going to nightclubs. I agree. But what if she, like, asks more questions about why he's going to the nightclub? Before she asks any questions. Then we charge her add-ons. <laughs> uh, before we answer any other questions, uh, we need some answers from her. Exactly. Oh. Like, we need to know her real identity because she's, like, clearly not telling the truth. And I feel like this whole case has just been, like, a farce to, like, dig up information on him so that she can, like, take him down or whatever. And that's just, like, not right. Like, why would she be so, like, vindictive? I just can't believe- I just- oh my god. I mean, that's- that's a worst case scenario, right? Maybe they're in like a thruple or something and uh, she's new to the relationship. I think that that's just like super speculative and we shouldn't do that. We should just like ask her directly. Oh my God, I'm just so beside myself with grief. This is like okay. so not biblical. <laughs> okay, I mean, maybe you're right there. Let's, uh, let's, uh, Lynn, get her, get her over here or something, I guess. Call her now. Okay, okay. Can you print me off that photo of uh, Tommy Wasabi and his husband and the children? Absolutely. Uh, maybe leave the kids out of it, right? Okay, we blur out the kids. We blur out the kids, but I love slamming down a photo for a client. They love that shit. It's all about okay. the theatricality, you know? And then we charge them $20 for printing out the photo. <laughs> I uh, I crop a, I crop the photo of Tommy and his husband. I crop it so that the kids are not in it because uh, I imagine they're shorter. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I put it in like um, a filter over it, and it's like Zestia filter. So like Tommy and his husband's skin is just popping. Lovely. So you're calling Pamela on the burner phone you gave her. Yep. Okay. And remember, we were not seen. No one saw us. No one saw our faces. We didn't set off any alarms. We did not set off any alarms. <laughs> there was no destruction of property, wanton or otherwise. I mean, not on our side. That's for sure. I... Right, Crisis Dasha, we, we got that all fixed up, yeah? We did it, like, super perfectly, and everything was fine. Yeah, nobody saw us. You can count us on us, boss. Okay, that was more for me and Bay, but uh, so happy to know the new hires are doing real good at following <laughs> instructions. As the phone is ringing, as you're making sure your story is straight with the rest of your crew, Le Capitan wakes up from his sleep and kind of looks around, and then shimmies behind the bookcase, jumps down, shimmies behind it, and you hear some movement out in the walls, uh, moving towards the outside of the building. Silence for a little bit, and then the movement coming back through the walls. 
and Le Capitan comes out through the wall, back behind the bookcase, with the burner phone in hand and a blonde wig on his head. Wait. This what? is not a good sign. <laughs> El Pamela Capitan. was the Capitan the whole time. <laughs> El Capitan, where'd you get that wig? Are you trying to tell us something that uh, that this Pamela was not who she said she was? Why didn't you tell us that earlier? We did all this work. The Capitan rushes over to the window and kind of points at it. And if you look out the window, he's pointing to a sewer grate outside. <laughs> Do you want a to like, go into the sewer? Do you know how dirty it is? There's so many germs. Oh my god. This, I do not expect our new employees to do. <laughs> this is why I brewed coffee. It always ends in the sewer. <laughs> Look, Capitan rolls his eyes, runs back in through the wall, walks through, points to the sewer grate, takes the wig off his head, throws it in the grate, and then picks it back up as if he was finding it for the first time. Ooh. Oh. Okay, so you uh, found all this stuff in the sewer? And it gives you an okay sign, or thumbs up. Okay, well, uh, I, I mean, I guess try calling uh, Pamela if this phone here in my hand rings. Maybe uh, she was abducted or something? She stole it by sewer people again? <laughs> Is there a known society of sewer people? Do I draw a history check? I, <laughs> I think that's one of your favorite cryptids. Is sewer people. Yeah, there you go. I throw back to a question from a couple episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't think that most people believe sewer people are real in this city. Okay. They absolutely does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Le Capitan is telling you that he found the phone and wig just now in the sewer. You hear the phone ringing as you're calling it, and that's kind of what woke up Le Capitan. He's got some good ears, this little raccoon buddy. Yeah, so this means that Pamela was just looking for us to find information or whatever on Tommy Wasabi and is not a real woman. I mean, well, she could well, be, but... <laughs> okay. But she is not a real Pamela Dionysus. Not a real Pamela. Okay, I think we got a situation here. This woman has either been abducted or isn't who she says she is. So let's... Uh, Can you print out maybe a picture... From the security cameras of this Pamela, and we'll ask Tommy Wasabi if he knows if he's seen this woman around. Do we have security cameras? Do we should yeah. have security cameras. You should have security. Maybe cameras. that's what we should yeah, do with our first was... with, with this big case. We should like purchase some security cameras. I thought we had at least one on the front of the building. I thought we talked about that already. Mm. So, do we have security cameras? You have one in the front of the building when Pamela. Just happened to be wearing that big brimmed hat and trench coat to kind of cover everything up. Oh, god damn it. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like the DM thought of it beforehand. Mm. Uh, what, what, what is driving you to solve any more of this case is my question. Um, Money. The, the lies money. and the deceit. Your way of contacting her was thrown into a sewer. What makes you think you're getting money from her? That's a good point. What was the purpose of her? What did she, what did she want? Now, that's going to be a long game question. Okay. Okay. You got to make promises early in the season that we'll end up following through with at the end of it. See? It's a little story arc. Wow. What you do see, Zastasha, as you're plugged into the computer. Uh, actually, can everyone roll me a perception check? I have two things that you yep. can notice. But Zastasha, I think I'm going to give you one because you're logged in. 12. 12. 13. 14. Then, that was a lot of just, what, 12, 13, 14? Okay. Yeah. So, Zastasha, what you will notice is you got an email about a deposit going into the business account uh, for 200 credits. And it's from an unknown account, and it just says, thanks for the help. Well, case closed. Whatever makes this case closed. I am so worried that we are now trapped in the middle of a drug war. I just think that this could be very dangerous in 200 What's going on here? Um, so, friends, I see that uh, we've been paid, uh, totally been paid, um, and it says 200 credits to us. And it says, like, thanks for the help. Does it say signed by anyone? No, it is not signed. 
Okay. Wow. And does oh. uh, does it have like the account that it was transferred from? Like any numbers on it or anything? Mm, just a bunch of X's. Oh, motherfucker. I know. I made okay. this one real difficult. But while you're trying to picture figure that out, Bay, you notice that the light is blinking on your answering machine. You've got two voicemails. The sewer people might have called and, <laughs> and told us where they took Pamela. <laughs> and Bay runs over and slams the button. Okay. The first voicemail. Hey, I'm Sid. You're that detective agency, right? Can you investigate why my mom is being such a bitch? Oh, Sid! I am not being a bitch! Yes, you are being a bitch, Ma. I really want to go to the demolition derby and see all the sexy guys and me and my girlfriends. You're not letting me. You're too young to go out on your own. I'm 14 years old. That's <laughs> not. I will not take this attitude from God, you're always the worst mom ever, interrupting my phone calls, everything. You're in my business. I hang up the phone. Uh, so a teenager. Wow. That kid doesn't know how good he's got it, eh? Do you think that her sewer people? <laughs> I mean, could be. I've never met a sewer person. I don't know what they sound like. I didn't even know sewer people were real. I don't think they are, there, Bay. I think that's just a uh, old wives' tale or something. Your second voicemail. Detectives, I need your help. It's a matter of life and death. I warn you, it will be dangerous, but I will pay handsomely. Grab your strongest weapons and meet me at the penthouse of Showtel at 10 a.m. Tell the front desk that Tokyo Bed and Breakfast sent you. Are you here yet? <laughs> yeah, it's really rude that you're not responding to me. Just get here at 10 a.m. before we go live. Uh, Zastasha, you recognize Tokyo Bed and Breakfast to be an influencer on Tentacle and related to a travel and accommodations mogul known as Dick B&B. &B. Well, okay, great. Um, oh my god, I like totally know who that is. One of the leading influencers on Tentacle. Oh my god. Wait, they're asking about... They're asking for our help. Friends, this could be, like, super lucrative for us to, like, go there and, like, be helpful. They said bring weapons. Oh my god, I have a hammer. <laughs> okay. And they want an answer by 10 a.m. tomorrow. They want us to like be there by 10 a.m. tomorrow. I don't think the answer they... could be no ever because look, influencer, like y'all, this could be like really big for us and the company. We could get like a new kitchen. She's gonna pay us an exposure. <laughs> uh, they said it was gonna be lucrative. To me, that means money, right? I hope so, because, like, we could, like, really dress this place up and get some more things, like more cameras. That? Yeah. Maybe some cameras that uh, look from bottom up, you know, as they're coming in, in case they're wearing those big old hats like the that one lady. I don't know if we should get upskirt cameras in our business. <laughs> but I have been, uh, I've gotten in hot water for that before. You gotta be real careful about the angles. Oh, no. I guess I didn't think about that. Mm. Anyway, I think that we should totally go. Let's put this little case with Tommy Wasabi and Carmen San Diego, um, Pamela Dionysus. Let's put that to rest for right now. And let's go ahead and help out this influencer because this could be like super good for us. And I mean, we got paid for the job with. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that's like super sketch. Um, But we'll, <laughs> you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right. Money is money. Can I divvy up? the money accordingly you know the drill i take like 10 percent off the top just to pay for expenses i had to sign up for a gym membership that shit's not cheap <laughs> and then we divide the rest by four okay uh, so. so we get the 45 each 200 minus 20. <laughs> i just give me one second i am a detective not a mathematician <laughs> <laughs> Tisha did it so fast. Uh, Bay squirts out a calculator. Tisha did it so fast, though. <laughs> I did. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, so everyone takes 45 shit. credits? Yep. 
Uh, and it gives you enough time for a long rest before you have to make your way over to the hotel. And since we're considering this case closed, that means you guys get to level up. <gasps> Yay. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Cause is Emotionally, it, is it, it feel like it was resolved? <laughs> Emotionally, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think as we're walking, uh, Rex is going to be like, who do you think we uh, helped out there? Like, uh, do you think that uh, we harmed uh, old Tommy there? Man, I feel I feel real wrong about that whole that that whole thing. Because we might have hurt the business of an illegal drug smuggler at Southwood. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I guess that's that's true. But uh, you know, we're not the law here, right? We don't pass judgment. Lynn is gonna slap your back and say, first thing you gotta learn." You do not ask where the money comes from, and you do not ask why they care. I see so many people cheating. I see so many people asking for me to spy on business competitors. If you are hiring a private investigator, it is usually not a good sign for the relationships in your life. <laughs> okay. We're not doing this to save people, friend. <laughs> this is where the money is. I just, uh... I don't know. Something doesn't sit right in my chest about that. But, uh, okay. Tabarnoche, me neither, but we got to eat. <laughs> yeah. What's the expression? Oh, well, burn that bridge when we get to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I, I mean, uh, if we want to cross the bridge, I don't think we should burn it first, but... Uh, Fair enough. All right. Uh, I'll just uh, put it back here in the back of my mind and not think about it until I need to go to sleep. <laughs> ah, that's what I save all my most embarrassing moments for. <laughs> Added a new one at the bar. I've never felt so ugly and unwanted as a pretty woman. A oh, horrible. <laughs> I, fe I feel for you there. Uh, you know, people's judgment, uh, they can it can hit you in the heart real hard. But, uh, you know, like, like you said, uh, we're not in, in this for other people's uh, benefit, right? That's We don't dress up or put on these clothes for other people. We do it for ourselves. And we got to keep that in mind. That's right, friend. That's right. Go ahead. Take some time to level up your character. Let's talk out if anything changes. I think you're all going up to seven. Is that right? Except no. for mm -hmm. Tisha going to eight. Oh, oh, I'm on five. We're going up two levels. Oh no, 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 no. Are you five? Then go to six. <laughs> I'm on six. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I should be level six now. Thank you all for telling the okay. truth. That's weird. Mine says fourteen. Do we get out of here? <laughs> 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 I know that's right. God damn it. I think actually, actually, there should be a good change going to sixth level for some of you, right? Yes. Rex Scott, Aura of the Guardian. Okay. Starting at seventh level. You can shield others from harm at the cost of your own health. When a creature within 10 feet of you takes damage, you can use your reaction to magically take that damage instead of that creature taking it. This feature doesn't transfer any other effects that might accompany the damage, and this damage can't be reduced in any way. Stay within 10 feet of me, uh, and I got your back. And your front. Oh, thank you. Nice. nice. Thanks, Dad. What changes for Lynn is... I have access to Channel Divinity Read Thoughts. Oh, wow. So I can use my Channel Divinity to read a creature's thoughts. I can then use my access to the creature's mind to command it. So as an action, choose one creature that you can see within 60 feet of you. That creature must make a wisdom saving throw. If they succeed, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. If it fails, I can read its surface thoughts. Um, when it is within 60 feet of me, it lasts for a minute. During that time, I can end my action to end this effect and catch the s suggestion spell on the creature without expending a cell slot. The creature automatically fails its saving throw against the spell. Damn. Damn. That's going to be useful. All right. Um, so, yeah, for, um, for Zestasha, uh, a few things happened. I got new spells, but the coolest thing is my uh, Artificer Infusions. Um, I have two new infusions now, a spell refueling ring. So I can uh, recover one spell uh, with this ring. Um, I might give it to Bay. We'll see how that goes. Uh -huh. And then I also have Repeating Shot. 
So whenever I turn my um, weapon, my hammer, into its gun form, this magic weapon grants a one plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls. And if my weapon does not have ammunition, it automatically creates it. Hmm. And then I also have tool expertise. Uh, my proficiency is doubled. My bonus is doubled if I use the tools um, that I have to, to, to do an ability check. And then I just got a whole bunch of spells. Um, I'm not going to say what they are because it's a party for everyone. Nice. Okay. I got an extra spell and I will say what it is. It was water breathing so that we can get down into these sewers and hunt for Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> That's if she's still down there. Only one way to find out. Mm. I, 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 thought, I thought we were putting it to rest. We're going to put these sewer people to rest. <laughs> because sewer people aren't real. <laughs> also, we kind of just skipped over that other, e- uh, that other voicemail about the mom and the son. Yeah, whatever. We kind of we said something. You've got two potential cases. I was just like, oh, that, that's, that's just a teenager. Yeah, with some kid ripping on their mom by calling us. I think that would be worth investigating. Anyway, I would say that in this downtime, though, uh, Sestasha is definitely, like, optimizing ether circuits and programming different gadgets and gizmos. Mm. Yeah, whatever you need to do in these next, I mean, we'll give you the eight hours, whatever you need for a long rest. And since it was so late at night by the time you got back to the agency, you guys are going to basically wake up, grab something to eat, and go. Lynn's putting French toast in the oven. Nice. It's just going to slow cook overnight. Yeah, exactly. Well, then you all can level up, got your new levels, wake up, and to the smell of French toast. Mmm. Do we often leave the oven on overnight while we sleep above it? It's like or a slow cooker. Next to it? Like a toaster oven. Okay. I'm assuming in the future they fix that. And also, yeah, it's also, yeah, it's the future. And also, Lynn sleeps with a lit cigarette in their mouth every night anyway, so. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, we, we were all awake and stuff. Yeah. I, I look over at Bay and I say, Bay, like, I have this thing for you. And I, I'm so sorry, this is, like, really insensitive of me, but, like, I know, because I, you don't, you don't really have hands. So, like, I, I'm just, okay, here, um, you can have this. And I hand. Uh, Bay, the spell refueling ring. Bay opens up like a like a mouth. Like if you made a mouth with your hand, <laughs> you your thumb uh, and your four fingers, uh, and it like reaches up and slurps around. Oh, Zastasha's hand to uh, take the ring. I like the way a dragon only takes by money. The, <laughs> only by the grace of the goddess am I not dying right now uh so after you get done violating me i uh tell you that like it's um so whenever you are just low on your luck and maybe magic the uh, magic around you is just all used up you can use the essence of this ring like once a day or whatever and like totally get a spell back you like your medium and low spells not like your super like strong powerful spells so like just you know be careful okay this is so nice thank you i have something for you too oh no no thank you i that's great you're fine I, I, my glove language is gift giving, not gift receiving. <laughs> okay, but it's really good. And you see Bay, uh, squirt out the blonde wig that was brought in from the sewer, but now it's like covered in Bay's goo and, and slime. Mm, and like put great. it right in the trash. Oh. Mm, yeah, thank you. Uh, Lanesha, if you could just pick that up and put it in the garbage. Thank you. And then I walk over to the Rux. Did I already give you that armor? Uh, I don't think so. What armor? Um, it is, it is an item infusion. And so what it does basically for you is the wearer can expend a charge to add its intelligence, mo- oh, intelligence modifier to a strength check or a strength saving throw. As a reaction when it would be knocked prone, the wearer can expend a charge to not be knocked prone. So I was going to infuse your armor with, uh, the ability to add your intelligence modifier to any strength checks or saving throws does it replace the strength and then you would instead of my strength like strength plus intelligence modifier 
Yeah. What's it called? The Armor of Magical Strength. The wearer can expend a charge to add its intelligence modifier to a strength check or strength of saving throw. Okay. Add, not replace. Yeah. yeah. What was the name of the ring that you gave me? It's called the Spell Refueling Ring. It's, it's not an item. It's an infusion. Yeah. By mm. an artificer. Yeah. So I just gave you a blank, uh, uh, like a boring ring, and then I infused it with spell refueling power. And uh, it, can repl- it can recover one expended spell slot, third level or lower, and then it can't be used again until the next uh, dawn. So I need to attune to my armor that I was wearing that you infused for me? Uh, no, there's no, there's no infusion. I mean, there's no attunement. And it has six charges. Nice. Okay. And it regains 1d6 expended charges daily at dawn. Oh, that's very nice. So that means you've got some new infusions, new levels, new spells. Is it time to make your way to meet Tokyo Bed and Breakfast? <laughs> Let's go meet Tokyo Such a good name. So happy with it. Oh, Paris Hilton. Okay, it took me a second. Ottawa June Motel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm getting my inner Ottawa out. That's what the voice is. Your inner Ottawa. (laughs) Um, Okay, then you can have your French toast, maybe on the go. Take your, and make your way to... The hotel. In the map, this is on the green district. It is just labeled as hotel on there. Beach hotel. Uh, quite a larger building compared to the other ones. Quite tall as well. I think it's like 20... 19 stories high? Yeah, 19 stories high. Um, yeah, so you make your way to the hotel. It has the word hotel uh, on a sign above it. Uh, when you arrive, you're greeted by an older man. And he says, Welcome to Showtel. How may I assist you? We are here to talk to Tokyo Bed and Breakfast. We have a morning meeting at 10 a.m., I believe. Oh, okay. Let's see. It's new names. Oh, we are the bailing you out detective agency. Here is my business card. And he's going to pull out like a really crumpled, ash-covered business card. Oh, the man will take it and look at it and look down on his notes. Do you, you need this back? It looks like it's your only one. I mean, they only come in packages of 500, <laughs> my man. You can take as many as you want. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, Tokyo has detectives or whatever on her schedule. I'll let you up. Uh, and he'll walk you over to an elevator. Hit the down arrow and wait. As the door opens, he'll walk inside, scan a key card, put his eye up to a camera. You'll see a red light kind of scan his eye. And click. He'll then hit the 19th floor and hold the door for you. But you called it down. So you have to press the up button, but it comes down. Okay. That's true. <laughs> to the basement, sir. You're absolutely right. I don't know. Shit. Maybe she is like a weird, creepy basement fortress. Like that's how this hotel works. Yeah, exactly. Nineteen floors under stories. <laughs> Get in the elevator. Oh wow! I don't think I've ever been to uh, this side of the city before. It's pretty nice over here. Look at that beach. My friends, we are not allowed to spit on the floor. We are not allowed to be swearing. We are not allowed to be um, rude to our guest aside from the normal bullshit. Bay had already the... spit on the floor, so they look a little embarrassed and kind of like roll over it to second. <laughs> First rule, don't spit on the floor. <laughs> Gotta be told that. Rux pulls a handkerchief. <laughs> out and hands it in Bay's direction. I don't know if this uh, works for you, if you can, like, wipe up any goop with it, but you can have it. That's all. And they, same way they grabbed the ring from Zastasha earlier, just slurp it out of the hand. Oh, man, this this slime is gonna stay on my fur for a long time, you know that, Bay? Yeah, you I, know have when a, you, I have a hanky that you looks me like, Is there any way you <sighs> can, like... Change your viscosity or something when you grab things from me? Uh, you can't ask him, Dad. That is racist. 
I can't ask him to change his viscosity when he touches my hand. I was bored this way. I'm just asking him to make some, like, uh, reasonable accommodations for my fur. How does the uh, butler look? He's with us in the elevator <laughs> while we argue. Yeah, like, he let you up. He did not go up with you. He's still at the front desk. Oh, okay. Thankfully. Uh, but I think you're having this conversation as the doors open on the top floor. Uh, and there to greet you is a spectral form of a man. A little bit see-through this man is. He'll greet you at the elevator and usher you out and point to a bowl on a table to the wall. There are individually packaged Tokyo brand biodegradable, vegan, gluten-free, antimicrobial hand wipes. Oh. They all have the word unwasted on them. <laughs> Big black bold font. And the spectral form will hit a button on the table. And then a video will pop up on the wall of Tokyo bed and breakfast herself saying... Just throw it on the ground. Just throw it on the ground. Nice. The base bits on the ground. <laughs> Zastasha, you recognize this as one of the many products under the Tokyo Bed and Breakfast name. Uh, this is These are her biodegradable hand wipes. You can literally just throw them on the ground when you're done with them. Oh my god, like, I feel like, I feel like such a Hyatt influencer right now. And I crumple it up and I throw it on the ground. Perfect. Rux takes one and wipes some of the of Bay's goo off of their fur and then puts it in their pocket. Okay. <laughs> I don't know uh, how I feel about just throwing something on the ground. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not going to biodegrade here inside the hotel. It's It will, though, because this is the future, uh, Rux. I know that like things are just different from where you come from, um, the past. Um, but things are different here. So if you could just take that out of your pocket, because that's really disgusting, and then throw it on the floor, please. Thank you. This is just instantly biodegrade. <laughs> like, it, it, yeah, so if you could just do it, I, please. Um, we're, I don't want you to embarrass me, please. And if you get caught with that in your pocket by Tokyo Bed and Breakfast, um, we will be judged. And she will put that on tentacle. So if you could just p- please take it, out, take it out of your pocket. Take it out of your pocket! <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Uh, and Rex pulls it out of their pocket and just holds it in their hand, crumpled up. The floor! Mm, the floor! Uh, you, you, you really want me uh, to drop this uh, on the, the floor? Uh, this feels so uh, wrong. Th- 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 on the floor. <laughs> Rux opens up their hand and lets it fall. And okay. as it falls to the floor, I take a pic- I take a selfie of all of us and you dropping it on the floor, and I say tentacle biblical. <laughs> um, and then I immediately tag uh, Tokyo Bed and Breakfast in it to let her know that we were following instructions. Love it. Rux's face in that photo is very, very grimaced. <laughs> Perfect. That's so funny. Then now that your hands are washed, the spectral form of a man will bring you into another room. This room is a bright pink room. And Tokyo is sitting at a vanity doing some finishing powder on her makeup. She'll look in the mirror to see that you're behind her and she'll just say, uh, who are you? Uh, we are the bailing you out agency. You called us yesterday and arranged a meeting. We have arrived at your request, mademoiselle. Oh, right. Okay, here's the tea. More specifically, here's the oolong half-calf chai tea with soy and lemon wedges. Yeah, it's that serious. Oh my god. And I immediately pull out, um, I tell Anisha to pull out her computer. I've got my own reality show where I'm finding my true love. Maybe you're watching it. But I need help deciding who to eliminate and who should win my heart. I'm down to the final four, and I want to make sure the person that I pick is here for love and not just for my fame. Zestasha is crying. Uh, so you want a background check on these four gentlemen to see if they will treat a lady such as you correctly? If they are doing this with love in their hearts? Kind of, except I need you to fight them. To the death? Physically? No. Hang on, let me explain. I'm down to the final four, and I want them to prove that they can defend me. So in 30 minutes, I'm going to bring them out to the penthouse balcony. I'll be seated on a throne poolside where I'll explain the challenge to them and to the camera. You're going to act as intruders trying to get me and take me away, and they have to fight you off to save me. Now you can really let them have it, but just don't kill them. As long as there's still a heartbeat, I can put them in my Tokyo brand rejuvenation bed, ready to heal anybody who gets hurt. So facial deformation is good? Yes, that'll be fixed in the Tokyo brand rejuvenation bed. 
So just don't kill them. And if you're too hurt at the end in case they hurt you, you can also use it. And then after the fight, I'll have a quick discussion with you on who you think was the worst protector, and I'll eliminate them right after. Are are they strong? One of them is. I mean, they all have their strengths. I'm looking for a lot in somebody, so I've really narrowed it down to four unique people. We have some very high rates of cover damages. This is a good point. Would you mind, Tokyo, giving us uh, just a ballpark of, you know, in terms of your how budget? much we will get for yeah, pain and suffering, your budget? Of course, we can do that. I, I should tell you the whole job. It's not just to fight. I also want you here for the final three and the final two. So after the battle, we're going to record three episodes of my reality TV show. The battle's going to be a live stream, so you'll be live with my millions of followers. And then we'll record two more episodes where I eliminate down to the final three and then the final two, and I'll pick one. So we do it all. I need you here for all of it. But the fight's going to be live stream, so you need to be, like, looking fierce. And that's why I picked you, because you guys were fierce on Tentacle. Yes. Um... There's also an extra fee if you accidentally fall in love with one of us instead. Oh, money. That's right. I totally forgot you (laughs) asked a question. (laughs) Uh, I'll pay you a thousand credits as long as you sign an NDA and release form for appearing on the show. uh, An NDA so you don't spoil the results. And I'll let you use the presidential suite on the 17th floor with complimentary room service the whole day. Okay. Uh, Can we please... Step outside on your balcony just to scope out where we will be fighting these gentlemen, potentially, but also to review your deal. Oh, absolutely. We understand this is time sensitive. Yes, they'll be here in 30 minutes, so it's a little time sensitive. Um, <laughs> hey, y'all, I just, um, I know that this is like the Baylin UL agency, but like, that's Tokyo Bed and Breakfast. <laughs> Do y'all know who that is? That's Tokyo Bed and Breakfast. Um... If she, um, yes, we accept Tokyo. This, we accept wholeheartedly, one hundred percent. Perfect. I've I mean, uh, let's... eaten a lot of wipes <laughs> off the floor. I don't know if she's special. Uh, <laughs> uh, she, uh, uh, they, they did not mean that. Um, they don't know what they're talking about. They're just, you know, they're like slime or whatever. So like, they're just like really crazy and like kind of. Sometimes they say like unbiblical things, but like we're not worried about that. Tokyo, thank you so much for this opportunity, and I cannot wait to put all of this on, um, put some of this information after we sign the NDA, which we're going to sign. Totally, we're gonna sign it. I cannot wait to put some of this information on Tentacle and then like make your brand and our brand for bailing out even bigger. Thank you for this opportunity, and I cannot wait to partake in it. Oh, my God. Like, isn't this great, friends? Isn't this great? Rux has already stepped out on the balcony and is looking and, like, telling people to come out. And I go to the NDAs, and I start forging your names. (laughs) (laughs) Bae's eating the rest of the napkins out of the bowl. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, I say uh, I look over at Bay um, as I'm walking over towards the NDAs, and I say, um, "Hey, you should like totally jump on my shoulder. I think we could take a good selfie together. Come with me." <laughs> Rux and Lynn, why don't you roll perception for me, and I'll talk to you about the balcony. It's big. Perception or investigation? Sorry. Oh yeah, can we like see if there's weapons and stuff? She told you to bring your weapons. You get weapons. You get your own weapons. The idea of room service is distracting me, and I rolled a 13. <laughs> Rux got a 6. They are super concerned about this whole fighting thing. Yeah. Okay. I got a 5. I'm just very excited to be on Sestasha's shoulders. <laughs> you are really enjoying those little hand wipes. Also, you're not, you're not outside, Bay. You're, um, you're with me. We're forging NDAs. Maybe that's why I couldn't see out there very well. Yeah. Lynn, you at least are very certain of this, and Rux, maybe you'll at least skim the back area. It's a pretty huge deck balcony. I wouldn't call this a balcony. I'd call it a deck. It's very large. It's at the very top of the hotel, so you're basically on the roof. There is a full pool that's there. There's also a big circular seating area with a fire pit in the center. There's a hot tub off in the corner. 
And it seems like half of it has been sectioned off for a battle. There's a throne that sits on one end. The background for that is the sky, the beach. And you've got 15 foot like powdered glass walls so that you don't go flying off the building. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That, that could happen though. Okay, don't throw people off the building, please. Uh, so <laughs> you've got the throne that has its back facing the beach. That's where Tokyo Bed and Breakfast is going to be set up filming. Uh, you see all the cameras actually back there too. There's cameras just fixed onto the walls or pillars. So there's no cameramen doing anything here. The show is set up to be fully run on cameras with a click of a button. It's not a TV set that you'd be thinking of. It's more like a, a vlog set. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am going to turn to Rux and be like, my only big concern is a looking weak in front of potential clients. Like if this is going to be broadcasted to millions of people, don't we want to look good and able to beat who I am guessing are four very soft, rich men? <laughs> I mean, I'm not the... I, I don't care about... look. I, look at me. I'm not going to look weak, right? I mean, look at me. I am at least 35. I look 50 at least. And I smoke a pack of cigarettes a day. Yeah, I'm smart, but uh, I'm wearing sweatpants. <laughs> Listen, I I don't want to hurt anybody, okay? Um, that's my whole thing. I don't want to hurt anybody. I could accidentally do that. The uh, what? Here's what I can do: is uh, just I'll just stay behind you and uh, take your hits for you with the uh, you know this uh, new skill that I learned. So you won't get hurt. I'll just take them, right? You can look strong. I don't have to fight. How's that sound? That works for me. And publicity is publicity, correct? Yeah, and I'll just, uh, you know, stand there and do some howling or something. I don't know. Oh, just do some growling? Yeah. Uh, it, my other thing is, uh, you know, I don't know this Tokyo, but um, I've heard the last name Bed and Breakfast. And uh, they have some strong pull. Money is money. All right, I just want to make sure that there's some, uh, you know, security for her. Now, I didn't see any. I kind of look up here. I don't even see any people. And that whole thing is wide open. They have walls. We ask for a little insurance just in case one of us gets grievously harmed. I mean, a thousand uh, credits is nothing to sneeze at. No, for sure. I mean, the money would be good, but... uh... You know, if she dies or something bad happens here. I mean, this is a big production. I don't even see any people. All I saw was a ghost butler. It was protecting this girl from these uh, crazy men that's going to fight people. There could be more ghosts. Okay. I mean, whatever you think is right. uh, I I don't want to fight, but uh, I'll be here for support. Okay, well, I think... This is a great job where we get the shit beat out of us, or we beat the shit out of some people, mm-hmm. and we get money for it. And then we watch a rich woman pick a man and eat hotel food. That may be a punishment, not so much as a payment. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay, let's go and tell the team. I'm surprised they did not join us out here. Yeah, uh... Maybe we can uh, make sure that this lady knows that this is, I mean, this is dangerous. You have, you know, the whole thing. This looks like one of those kings and queens coliseum kind of things where there's a princess and somebody shoots the king kind of thing. And Abraham Lincoln, you know him? (laughs) Ah, I don't know. That might be past your time, but (laughs) people get shot in those kind of booze. Okay. (laughs) As you are having this conversation, making your way inside, uh, Zastasha and Bay have already filled out all the paperwork, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tokyo has collected the paperwork and said, hot, you can get yourself ready, powder your nose or whatever. Cameras will be on in 20 minutes. Meet me out poolside. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need Uh, a few minutes to center myself. I'm sorry, Tokyo. Before you take those few minutes, can we get a deposit or something? Like, just to make sure this is on the up and up. 
it's on the up and up and i think it's really in in professional of us to like question the tokyo okay um, tokyo you go take care of your business i am so sorry for that intrusive question oh my god all right don't worry charles will handle it handle it charles is the is my butler you got it charles right she'll walk by him and she'll she'll see you outside uh the spectral form will go Giles, not Charles, but yes. He'll go over to the wall and start typing onto a little keypad. Your account, come type it in. As you all are walking to the account, I just kind of make a statement to everyone and I say, if y'all, like, hi, if y'all haven't really um, noticed uh, about Tokyo, uh, um, she's an heiress, um, kind of, like, vapid and really shallow. Um, So she doesn't really take care of, like, the intricacies of like what we're doing or whatever so like maybe we should leave everything up to what was your name winston winston we should leave everything up to winston if we're gonna ask like those like really boring and like grueling questions because she doesn't have time for it okay so i don't even think she really knows what she's like doing or whatever she, so, let's ask other people because we don't want to you know be on tentacle as like the lamest people in the world like the most unbiblical so okay so okay so is someone typing in their uh, the account number for them? Yeah, okay. yeah, Loon is. Once you're done typing the account number, he'll uh, wave his hand to you and start typing again. And you'll hear a ding. And if you look at your account now, you've received a deposit of five credits. Well, I mean, I guess that was on us for not being more specific. <laughs> hey there, Giles? Giles? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Can you tell me your name again? Giles. You got it. Giles, uh, does this uh, lady, does this whole event have some kind of security or anything? I haven't seen anybody but uh, you. Mm, only way in or out is the elevator with access, retinal scan, and key card. Okay, but that guy down there was pretty old. It's not like he can uh, hold off anybody if they really want to come in. What are they going to do, rip his eye out? I, you don't have to rip somebody's eye out, okay? There's many ways to skin that cat. Hmm. They could just hold his face up against there. I mean, he, he, he's small. We could pick him up. I could go pick him up right now and just hold his face up against the eye, eye thing. No harm to him. We've yet to have an issue, but I will take your concern under consideration. Okay. If you say so. Hmm. I must help Tokyo get ready. Excuse me. He'll float off down the hallway. And that means that next episode, we're going to have a battle. Dun, dun, dun. Time to fight. We're going to have a Valentine's Day battle next time. Join us for that. Until then, I'm Chris the DM. You can find me on all social media at Chris Drinks Lemonade. I'm Tisha. You can find me on Instagram at the number one Tish, the number one. I'm Brandon. You can find me on TikTok at Blue Cotton Candy Cosplay sometimes because I don't post often anymore. Hi, my name is Katie, and you can find me occasionally in our Discord. And hi, I'm Jonathan, and you can find me on TikTok as well. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye! 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 Bye. An RGRP LLC production. Music by Joe Barsanti. The voicemail by Sid was voiced by Miguel. 